everybody and welcome back to Echo Live coming to you from the Michigan Science Center. Thank you so much for joining us for another week of really fun live science programs. Today we have a very special Echo Live program planned for you at home. Um, today we'll be taking a tour of our virtual planetarium with our staff astronomer and resident solar system ambassador Paulette. Um, so hi Paulette, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Great, we are so excited. Um, I know we have a really fun plan or plan for today. I know you're gonna show us some really cool things. Um, but first, could you just tell us what exactly does it mean to be a solar system ambassador? That sounds like the coolest job in the world. So that's a really great question. I'm actually a volunteer for NASA's JPL. Um, so I volunteer for uh, the Solar System Ambassador Program to spread the news about the nighttime sky and what NASA is doing. Very cool. So you also work at the Michigan Science Center and have a pretty awesome job there as well. That's right. I work at the Michigan Science Center and I am called an astronomer. Our, I'm our staff astronomer. So for any of you that uh, have an answer, go ahead and put it in the comments on Facebook Live. Um, but do you know what an astronomer is? What does an astronomer study? And we've given you a couple of hints with Anna's background and my background um, and things that we posted on Facebook earlier today. So again, what does an astronomer study? Oh, so we have someone that said, I love NASA. I love NASA as well. That is our uh, National Aeronautics and Space Agency. Um, so I'm here to talk a little bit about what we can see up in the nighttime sky. So I see some answers popping up. Space, that's right. Astronomers study space. So we study the stars, the nighttime sky, things called galaxies. Um, we study all sorts of really cool things. Sounds amazing. So it looks like we've got a couple really great answers coming in. Everyone at home, if you are tuned in through Zoom or if you're tuned in through Facebook Live, um, keep typing up your questions um, or your answers to Paulette's questions in the chat um, that Paulette and I will both be able to see throughout the program. Um, with that, I'm going to let Paulette take it away um, and take us on our tour of the nighttime sky. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take a look at our virtual planetarium. All right, so we've already set it to our nighttime sky. Um, we've set the sky to about 10 o'clock tonight because it's one of the best times to go outside and do a little bit of stargazing. So I'm going to point out just a couple of things and we're also going to uh, face a certain direction. So right now, you can see that we're facing the direction south. That's the one that's right in front of us. But if we go over to the south, southwest right now, we're gonna see a lot of really bright stars and objects up in that part of the sky. Now, some of the objects that we can see are, uh, some of the objects that we can see are, let's see, some planets, um, and we can also see the moon. So if we look right down over here, we can see the planet Venus. And right up over here, we can see the moon. But I'm gonna get rid of our planets so that we can see things a little bit better. All right, so now we can see some of the, things, the stars that we have up in the nighttime sky. We can see that there's a lot of really bright stars. Um, we can go through some of them. Right here, we have a star called Betelgeuse. Right over here, we have another one called Rigel. Right up over here, we have a really bright star called Sirius, and you might even say it's seriously bright. We have a star right up over here called Procyon. We have Pollux and Castor. And right over here, we have Capella and Aldebaran. Now, these are some of the brightest stars that we can see up in our nighttime sky tonight. And if I bring up the star names, there we go, we can see them a little bit better. These stars make up what we call the winter circle. So if we draw lines between each of these stars, we'll be able to see the circle 
that it makes. Now you might say that doesn't look much like a circle and you're right, it has some corners. Um, some people call it the winter hexagon, um, but I call it the winter circle. So um, as we look at this part of the sky, I think I saw somebody in the comments say that they see Orion the Hunter. And that's right. We have Orion the Hunter right down over here. Orion has three belt stars right here. And it has um, its shoulders, Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, and his knees or ankles, Rigel and Safe. If we draw the picture or the draw the stick figure for this, we'll see something in the sky that looks kind of like that. Now this is Orion the Hunter. And like I said, he has a club up in the air, a shield out in front of him. And Orion the Hunter is one of my fav favorite constellations because he actually kind of looks like what he's supposed to up in the nighttime sky. If we take our three belt stars right here and draw a line through them over, we'll get to Sirius, that bright star up in the sky. Now this is sometimes known as the dog star. And that's because it's part of the constellation that we call Canis Major or the big dog. So we have our big dog up in the nighttime sky and following the stick figure, it does actually kind of look like a dog. Our next constellation that we're gonna point out is right up over here with the bright star Procyon. And if I click on this one, you're gonna see that this constellation is really made up of two stars. This one right here and this one right here. Now, when you draw a line between two stars, you basically get a line. Um, the only, this is actually supposed to be Canis Minor or the little dog. The only dog that I see in that part of the sky is a hot dog. Sorry, mustered up the courage to tell that one. Really, I thought everyone would relish the joke. All right, all right, I'll let everyone catch up. Okay, really, I know I'm the worst. All right, so this is our little dog that we have right here, or Canis Minor. If we look right up over here, we're gonna see Gemini, the twins. And these two stars, Pollux and Castor, are about the same brightness up in the nighttime sky, which is why they're part of twin constellations, because there are twin stars that we have. And right up over here, we're going to see our star Capella, which is part of Auriga the charioteer. Now, I know this doesn't look much like a charioteer, but um, I also sometimes call this a hexagon up in the sky because it's pretty easy to find. If we look right down over here, we're going to see the bright star Aldebaran. And Aldebaran is part of the constellation called Taurus the Bull. Now I've been going through these constellations and, you know, we're looking at the stick figures and some of the stick figures, like I said, don't really look much like the constell or like the things that we're supposed to see up in the nighttime sky. But if we draw the pictures associated with them, we'll be able to see them a lot better. It takes a lot of imagination to see constellations up in the nighttime sky. Um, and so seeing the pictures is really difficult, which is why I encourage everyone to go outside and try and find these stick figures that I'm pointing out. Now these constellations are up in the sky and they're gonna be up in our sky for the next couple of weeks. So we'll still be able to see them. Um, I see a couple of comments in our Facebook chat as well. Like um, someone asked if Sirius is like Sirius Black from Harry Potter. And that's right. Sirius is like Sirius Black from Harry Potter. JK Rowling actually got her name Sirius from that star. We also have a couple of other Harry Potter references in this part of the sky. For example, this star right over here is called Bellatrix. 
So Bellatrix is up in the sky as well. Now, I, I see a couple other things. Someone said that they love Scorpius. Scorpius the scorpion is not up in the nighttime sky right now. That's something that we call a summer constellation. Um, and that's because uh, if you talk about the story of, if you talk about the story of Orion the hunter, Orion and Scorpius the scorpion fight each other. And so to make sure that they couldn't fight each other anymore, they put them in opposite parts of the sky. So when you can see Orion the hunter, you're not able to see Scorpius the scorpion. Now, I also saw another person who asked, will we see the Big Dipper tonight? We definitely will. The Big Dipper is something that we call a circumpolar constellation. So that means that it's up all the time up in the, it's up all the time in our nighttime sky. Um, so you'll be able to see it, but it'll be in the other part of the sky. It'll be in our northern part of the sky. And maybe we'll talk about our northern constellations uh, during another program. Now, somebody pointed out something else that we can see. We can see right over here something called the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But I actually want to talk a little bit about stellar formation. This part of the sky is a really great area to talk about stars in their lifetimes. So if we look right down over here in Orion's belt, we'll be able to see a star forming region. This is called the Great Orion Nebula. It is a giant uh, cloud of hydrogen gas that brand new baby stars are being formed out of. So this area of the sky is sort of our new birth, our brand new proto stars that are being formed. Now, if we go to another part of the sky, we'll see stars that have formed and are fairly new. So if we look right over here, Someone said we could see the Seven Sisters, and that's right. This is called the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters. Now, with the unaided eye, you can see about five or six stars, but this is something that we call an open cluster. If we zoom all the way in, we'll see that you can actually see over 50 stars in that small little area of the sky, and those stars are orbiting around each other, which is why we call it a cluster. If we scroll back out, we'll actually be able to find an area of the sky that has not stellar birth, but stellar death. So if we look right over here, we're going to see another area called the Crab Nebula. This was actually um, formed when a star in 1054 exploded. And uh, that exploded and we can see some of the remnants right here. So this is an example of what happens when stars die. In this part of the sky, like I said, we can see several different stages of stellar formation. We can see the star's birth, the star's being new, and of course the star's life and the star's death. So we've got a lot of things that we can see up in the winter part of our sky. Now, somebody asked right over here, am I on Google Earth? That is a really good question. Um, the virtual program that I'm using is actually called Stellarium. It's a free program and you can definitely play around with it at home. Um, so, those are the constellations that we have in our winter sky. Somebody in Zoom asked who named these constellations. And you know what? That's a really good question. So a long time ago, the ancient Greeks looked up into the nighttime sky and they made these different pictures that we see. Those different pictures of constellations were named mostly by the ancient Greeks and Romans. But the star names, most of them are actually Arabic in origin. Um, so, so a lot of the brighter stars 
uh, were named by Arab nations a uh, long, long time ago, um, but the constellations mostly named by the uh, ancient Greeks and Romans. There, to be a constellation though, it has to be official by the International Astronomical Union or IAU. Um, so uh, these constellations, though they were named during Greek and Roman times, they are officially um, known through the International Astronomical Union. All right, it looks like we've got a few more questions that are coming up. Uh, somebody asked, are we going to see some planets tonight? And um, yes, definitely, we're going to see some planets. If I bring our planets back up, oops, if I bring our planets back up, there we go. We can actually see right down over here, we'll see the planet Venus. Let's take a closer look. So if you have a pair of binoculars, uh, you'll be able to see the planet Venus looking a little bit like that up in the sky. How many constellations are there? That is a really, really good question. There are 88 official constellations. So those 88 official constellations, like I said, are named by the International Astronomical Union or IAU. And I should be able to bring up um, well, I can't, I can't bring up all 88 right now. Um, let's see. Are there seven brothers? Uh, really, really good question. Um, I don't believe so, but uh, there is Orion the Hunter and Hercules and Perseus, all of the really cool Greek um, and Roman uh, heroes. And so they're up in the nighttime sky as well. Let's see, how old are the stars? You know what, that is a really, really good question. Some of the stars are older than others. So for example, the stars that we see in the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters over here are only a couple million years old. And I know, I know that sounds like really super old, especially when we compare it to uh, regular life, um, but, um, when we compare it to some of the other stars, um, our sun is about 4.5 uh, 4 billion years old. So it's about in the middle of its life. Um, and some of the stars that we see are, are billion, it's like tens of billions of years old. Let's see. Are stars different colors? That is a really, really good question. Um, so if we look up in our sky, right over here, we'll actually see the different colors of stars. We turn off our planets again so we can see them a little bit better. Betelgeuse right up over here is red. And if we look right down over here, Rigel is a blue color. The different colors mean that they're different temperatures. If you wash your hands, what color is, um, the, the, when you wash your hands, red is hot and cold is blue, but the stars are actually the exact opposite. So blue stars are really, really hot. There are a couple of tens of thousands of degrees. Um, and the red ones are much, much cooler, only a couple thousand degrees. Uh, so let's see. Oh, somebody asked, when did you learn about astronomy? That is a really, really good question. Um, the I learned about st astronomy. Uh, Let's see, I've graduated from college about 10 years ago, uh, but I went to the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point um, for physics and astrophysics, but I've been working uh, in the planetarium field for about 10 years or so. Um, so I've been working at the Michigan Science Center for about five years. So really, really good question. Um, so somebody asked, um, Orion and Scorpius, yes, they are separated because they did fight uh, a long time ago. And so um, we are, that's why they're separated up in the sky. And some of the stars look white, the next question. Um, some of the stars look white, but Betelgeuse will actually look like a red star. And Rigel will actually look like a blue star when you see it up in the sky. So the sun is uh, about 6,000 degrees. Uh, Celsius uh, at, at its surface, but 
Um, so it's it's something that we call a, a yellow dwarf. Um, so it's not hot, but it's not cool. So um, it's somewhere right in the middle. The red stars, like I said, are really, really cool. The uh, blue stars are really, really hot. Uh -huh. Let's see. Are there any other dog constellations? Unfortunately, no, um, but uh, those two are definitely my favorite, especially Canis Minor, definitely my favorite constellation. All right. So Anna, do we have any other really good questions? It's taken a while to load on my send. Oh, um, is the movie yeah. Fatal? Is the big movie Betelgeuse named after that star? It actually isn't named after that star. Um, it's it's uh, it's named after. I'm not exactly sure, but you'll notice that the the spelling is a little bit different. Um, and if you pronounce this using the Arabic pronunciation, it'll be Betelgeuse instead of Betelgeuse. So someone did ask a little earlier on. They said, "Will we be able to see the Milky Way tonight?" Oh, that's a really good question. Now, if you are really far away from city lights, the answer is yes, you'll be able to see the Milky Way. We've set up our planetarium sky so that we're looking at it is as if we're looking through, um, through if we were out in the suburbs of Detroit. Um, but if you look really carefully, if you look right here, you might be able to see something that looks a little bit like a milky band of light. So this is part of the Milky Way galaxy. And if I zoom all the way out, you'll actually be able to see that it stretches all the way across the sky right here. So yes, if you're far enough away from city lights, you'll be able to see the Milky Way, um, but uh, only if you're far enough away from city lights. So there's another really great question. It said, how many stars are there? But maybe we could address that as, in terms of how many we can see. And then maybe if you want to take it even further, how many could there be? Yeah, so um, we have about 6,000 stars that we can see with the unaided eye. So that's without the help of telescopes or binoculars or anything like that. Um, if we used a pair of binoculars, then we'll be able to see a lot more stars. Now, when we think about it, there are, when we think about our Milky Way galaxy, the galaxy that we live inside of, there are about, oh, about 300 billion stars or so. Now we've been able to measure uh, the light coming from the Milky Way of all the stars up in the nighttime sky, the light from other galaxies, um, to be able to make that estimate. If we then look across the sky and see how many galaxies there are, there's about 600 billion galaxies. So if you take those 3 billion stars, which is just an estimate, and you go all the way out to those 600 billion galaxies, there are a lot of stars in our universe. Very cool. Uh, we have a couple questions about the northern side of our sky, but maybe instead of answering them, do you think that maybe we could arrange a time to tour the northern part of the sky? And maybe you could tell us what's so special about that part of the sky. Absolutely. Well, um, we can do another program um, to tour the northern, northern part of the sky. I can turn us around to be able to see it a little bit better. Um, the northern constellations are really, really cool because they're always up in the nighttime sky. They are um, right near our uh, rotational axis. So as the Earth rotates around, we'll always be able to see them because they circle around our North Star Polaris. Very cool. Well, um, it looks like we are still getting questions coming in, um, but it looks like we might need another planetarium program um, in order to answer some of these questions. What do you think, Paulette? I definitely think so. Uh, let's see. Um, someone in Zoom also asked us, are there lava on any of the stars? Is there lava on any of the stars? That's a really good question. Um, so the stars are really, really hot. They're made out of a form of matter that we call plasma, which is basically a superheated ionized gas. 
Um, and so that superheated ionized gas isn't really quite lava, um, but it is something that we call plasma. Um, so some of the planets orbiting around some of those other stars might have uh, lava on them, um, but they're too hot to even have lava. All right, so maybe we'll take one last question because I did see one great question, which is my favorite space question that people ever answer. And I know you have a great answer for this question, Paulette. It is how many planets are in our solar system? How many planets are in our solar system? You know what? That is a really, really great question. Um, so within the solar system that we're part of, we have eight planets. Um, we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We also have dwarf planets and asteroids and all sorts of other things within our solar system. However, there are a lot of other solar systems out there. So there are a lot of other things called exoplanets. Um, so those exoplanets are planets orbiting around other stars. And most of the stars that you might be able to see in our galaxy probably have at least one planet around them. So we have about, oh, let's see, 3,000 exoplanets or so that we've already been able to discover and see through science. Um, but we're discovering more and more all the time. Um, so uh, we are, there are a lot of planets in our galaxy. Um, and when we, when we talk about it, you know, basically a lot is the answer to that question. That's a really great answer. Um, well, it looks like we are just about out of time for today on Echo Live. Um, we hope everyone at home enjoyed the program. I know I had a really great time. So thank you, Paulette, for joining us today. Um, and we're hoping that we'll see you back here a little bit more regularly. It sounds like we have a lot more space content we want to talk about. Um, well, again, uh, the program Paulette was using today for our star tour, this one is called Stellarium. Um, it is a free program. So if you're interested in exploring um, the program yourself, um, we'll type it in the comments. We'll provide a link there, um, but it is called Stellarium and you can check it out yourself. If you have any questions while you're on the program, um, definitely feel free to message us here on Facebook um, so we can provide some answers for you at home. Um, now, again, these Echo Live programs, they run every day at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, they are free for all of you at home, thanks to our generous sponsors like the DTE Energy Foundation. We are so, so grateful um, that they are providing, helping to provide these programs to you um, at home for free. If you enjoyed the program, please share it on your Facebook page. Um, and then we hope we will see you back here tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Eastern for our next segment of Echo Live. So thank you again, Paulette. Thank you. All right, have a great day, everybody.